much uh, for the representative prayers for the invocation and we can all appreciate how miss uh miss swati you sing very well <laughs> extremely well i almost forgot that was a prayer that was very beautiful uh, i'd be i'd be very pressured to give a representative prayer if uh in hinduism i can't sing for my life but anyways thank you Let us first talk about the concept of God in Hinduism before we start talking about how God sends us his messages. So Hindus believe that God is this all-pervasive, infinite energy that is within all of us and that powers us. So if we were to imagine ourselves as computers, then the physical body and the mind are the hardware and the software and the power that runs all of us from within is the divine so with this framework each one of us if we are able to peel off the layers of the outer shells of mind and body of ego jealousy all those things then we will be able to experience the divine so technically anyone can become the messenger of god if they are able to experience that connection with the divine vedas which are uh, oldest hindu scriptures and oldest scriptures known to mankind talk about these concepts samaveda says tat tvam asi the essence is you yajurveda says aham brahmasmi which means i am the brahm with the divine the infinite energy we also believe that this all knowing god can incarnate in any form man woman any form and can walk among us to show us the right path although there are many 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 incarnations uh, probably the most celebrated incarnations in today's day and age and arama and krishna and scriptures of ramayana and mahabharata are all about life and times of uh, rama and uh, krishna and um bhagavad gita is the is the scripture that has been given to us by god himself by krishna himself um uh, and as to when the god comes um here is a quote from bhagavad gita that says yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharat abhyutthanam madharmasya tadatmanam srijanmyaham which means whenever there is loss of dharma that is the universal balance and whenever there is a rise of adharma that is imbalance that's when i come paritrana ya sadhunam vinashaya ch duskritam dharma sansthapanayartha sambhavami yuge yuge which means to protect the saints and to destroy the evil to establish the dharma i come in every age Thank you so much. Let's give uh, Miss Swati a round a round of applause for her wonderful answer and voice. Wonderful, <laughs> that was great. You know, we should make that a requirement. All religious leaders will now answer with the with singing. Uh, if you do not sing your answer, <laughs> so Miss Swati, whenever you're ready. Even when the all-knowing God incarnates, not. only a few people can recognize him probably the ones who have been preparing for their moksha their union with god for a very 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 long time 
there there is this verse in ramayana which is like ja ki rahi bhavna jaisi raghumurati dekhi tin taisi which means whoever has whatever kind had whatever kind of sentiments and emotions and readiness is what they saw in lord rama when he walked the earth and walked these halls full of people there were some who could just connect and experience uh, the oneness with him and attain moksha right then and there there were few who did not recognize him and then there were few who saw an enemy in him his own step mother who was full of ego and greed at a particular point in time sent him to the forest for 14 years because she wanted her own son to be the king the same same happens when krishna walks the earth there are a lot of people who are just mesmerized by him few don't recognize him and many see him as an enemy in the battle of mahabharata uh duryodhana who's on the wrong side of the battle is full of ego greed jealousy when he is given a chance to choose between the armies of krishna and krishna himself he happily chooses uh krishna's armies while arjuna who is on the right side of the battle chooses krishna and is just happy to have him as the guide even for arjuna to fully trust krishna it takes a lot of questions and answers as part of bhagavad gita to to convince uh, to convince to listen to krishna fully so in hinduism nobody is chosen one has to earn it by keep working on their objective of moksha through through one lifetime or multiple lifetimes but nobody is chosen everybody has to work towards it to do to be able to recognize the divine outside or enlightened beings are not very different from the things that we need to do every day to be able to recognize the divine within one day to do that we need to walk the path of yoga which means union with the divine it does not mean that those few postures that we go and do in a yoga studio <laughs> every week it means much more than that There are four paths to yoga and everybody can choose their path or a combination of different paths based on their self awareness and their experiences of life. The first path I I'll talk about is bhakti yoga uh which means the path of devotion. This is the path where one is trying to connect to the divine energy uh through devotion and love. So if you see Krishna devotees devotees dancing in bliss uh you are witnessing bhakti yoga. The second path is gyana yoga which is the path of intellect. This is when one is studying different scriptures reflecting on it debating with others on those just like we are doing and uh trying to find the truth that way. then there is third path which is called raja yoga which is uh when one is trying to figure the realities of life using the paths of yoga and meditation uh, there are many paths like hatha yoga or uh mantra yoga and there are various gurus that lead us into these paths then there is this fourth path which is probably uh also included in any other path that you take which is called karma yoga the idea here is that you do your karma or your action uh without thinking uh without thinking that you have the right to the outcome so you do what's needed you do what uh what suits your inner capabilities but you don't uh think too much about the outcomes So for instance I am right now in a grihastha ashram which means I'm in a stage where I'm raising a family so that is my major focus right now uh and uh I act based on that and intrinsic capabilities or uh the things that I have inside of me uh for instance I have this thing for meditation so I do that to progress 
on the path to moksha. So uh, basically, you you follow any of these different paths or a combination of that to keep on peeling layers of yourself to be able to reach the divine one day. And yeah, I think you kind of just summarized it at the very end uh, very well, uh, which was that in the end, we just got to keep on peeling away and we'll reach that divine within us. And that's going to make us uh, capable of, I guess, realizing that divine in ourselves and in each other. So thank you so much for that great answer.